Hi everyone, welcome back to Art of the Part. In this video, we're going to continue on with our business card holder case study. And in the last few videos, we covered quite a few topics in CAD, uh, ranging from design optimization to make it easier to manufacture, separating and isolating out our swivel rotations or cycle 800s into their own configurations to make it easier for five axis programming. And we even validated the part using SOLIDWORKS simulation to perform a drop test on the business card on the front and the back corners. So I've gone through pretty much everything that I want in CAD and I'm ready to go ahead and move forward and start programming this in CAM. So I'm going to show you how to program the first operation of the business card holder, which is going to be the backside with the logo uh, in two different ways. So the first way I'm going to show you is how to quickly get through it in MasterCAM. However, that's not going to be linked to the SOLIDWORKS file. And then I'm going to do another version um, using the SOLIDWORKS file, which is my preferred method. So I'm going to go ahead and hop over here to MasterCAM and show you how to model this in MasterCAM. This might be a little bit redundant since everything's already done in uh, SOLIDWORKS. However, if you are just working in MasterCAM, I just wanted to show you how you could uh, process this a little bit more quickly. So um, I'm going to just first and foremost make sure that my parameters are set here in MasterCAM. So I'll go up here to File, and then I'm going to click on Configurations. And then inside of configurations, I just want to make sure that my units are set to inches and then my current units are inches as well. All right, so now that I'm in inches, I'm going to go ahead and hop over here to my levels. And I want to prepare this to either create wireframe geometry or solids. So right now I have a, a default level. Um, I could rename that to wireframe or I could create a new uh, level and name that wireframe. However, I'm just going to use this default one and I'm going to title this one wireframe and I'm going to draw out a square. So inside that wireframe tab, I'm going to use the wireframe tab up here as well. So I'll click on wireframe and then I'll grab rectangle. And then all I have to do is, if you want to, you can create a rectangle from the center. Um, I'm just going to draw a standard rectangle out. The dimensions really aren't going to matter too much right now. Um, we can go ahead and update these dimensions after the uh, wireframe is placed. So I'm just going to draw a rectangle like this. Um, for the width of the rectangle, I'm going to make it 3.6875. And then the height of the rectangle is going to be 2.9375. So that was going to be our X and Y extents of the business card holder. I'm going to go ahead and click the green check mark and have that place. Um, I'm going to make a copy of this wireframe just because it's going to make it easier to grab these corners when I bring in a logo. So I'm going to right click on wireframe so it's selected. I'm going to copy entities. I'm going to create a new level back here. I'm going to say wireframe with radii as my name here. And then I'm going to right click on that level and I'm going to paste my entities. Um, really quickly, I'm just going to hide my wireframe with the corners um, and I'm going to apply my radii here onto this uh, rectangle that I'm looking at. So inside the wireframe tab, uh, we're going to use the fill entities, which is on the right side or the end of this tab. Click on fill entities and the two top uh, corners are going to be 250 and then the two bottom corners are going to be a half inch. So I'm going to type in 250 for my entities and then I'm going to grab those two edges and I'm going to grab these two edges. Then I'm going to go ahead and change this to 0.5. Uh, I was worried it was going to do that. It's still highlighted. So I'll go ahead and select these next ones. And then I'm going to make that 0.5. And then I'll make this 0.5. Okay. So we have the outline of the uh, business card holder for first operation. And now we're going to uh, extrude this out. So a good habit, again, to get into is whenever you're making geometry inside of MasterCam is always to separate these out by levels. Um, just so everything doesn't accidentally get placed onto one level. So for instance, I'm going to go back here into the levels uh, tab and I'm going to make a new level here. And then I'm going to title this one solid. So this is going to be our solid extrusion. So after we've created the um, solid level, we're going to hop over here to the solids tab. And in solids tab, I'm going to click on extrude. So with that extrude, I can grab a chain which is going to be this whole chain right there. And then I'll hit the green check mark. So you'll notice that it's actually extruding from that wireframe geometry. If your extrusion is facing up, you can always flip it back and forth, just like how we can in SOLIDWORKS. It's these two little arrows. 
that reverse the direction. And then I'm going to give a distance here. So if it defaults to 1, you can update it to 0.9375. Or you can change the dimensions as well, like 1.5, however you want. But I'm going to make this 0.9375 because that's the uh, height of our part here. And if you wanted to, you can name the extrusion. But I'm just going to leave it extrude and then hit the green check mark. So if I ever wanted to go back and make a revision on that extrusion, for instance, I can hop over here to the solids tab. So down here where it says levels on the bottom left, I can go to solids. And inside solids here, I can click or double click on that extrusion. And I can change that, like I was saying before, to like 1.5 or 2. And I'll just change it back to 0.9375. So you have flexibility in changing those uh, pieces of geometry there. Okay, so I'm now going to add a chamfer to the edge here um, just to break it because it's a little bit bigger. If I wanted to, I could leave it sharp and I can add that uh, chamfer with a model chamfer inside of the tool paths. However, I just want to show you um, how you can quickly add it here in Mastercam as well. So I can click on inside the solids tab, one distance chamfer, just like how I could click on it and fill it. But in this instance, I'm going to use a chamfer and then I'm going to go ahead and select each one of these edges and then hit end selection. So it's now applying a chamfer there and I'm going to make that distance 0.125. And hit the enter button and then the green check mark. So now I've applied my chamfer to it just like how I was talking about before if I ever had to make a change I can go and double click on that chamfer there, and I can make it bigger or smaller. So for example, I can make it 250, or I can pull it back to that 0.125 dimension. Okay, so now I'm gonna hop over here to the Levels tab and kind of talk about the logo really quick. So for instance, it would be easier to reference the first wireframe because it has corners. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that on and turn this wireframe uh, with the radii off and then turn that wireframe with the corners on just because I can actually select these corners and center the logo as it's being pulled in. I also have that um, chamfer highlighted. If you want to turn that off, you can go over here to the solids and just hit the top solid. Okay, now I'm gonna pull in that logo. So I'm gonna go over here to art. If you don't have art um, prompted right now, you might have to click on the start art option here in the art tab. And that's going to allow you to now select the raster to vector. So I'll click on raster to vector. Um, it's just giving us a, a standard prompt here. Just hit yes. I'm going to pull in the Scar Hawks logo from IIT. And I've dedicated a whole video to this, but I'm just going to quickly go through it. I'm processing this in such a way where I'm just getting the outlines. Um, 300 DPI, that's fine. And then we're going to make sure that this is registering as lines, corners, and arcs green check mark. So realistically, you could find any um, logo that you wanted to and pull it in. Uh, so for me, this one is actually pulling all the way down here on the bottom right. And I'm just going to kind of process this here. So I'm going to zoom in and smooth more. I'm just going to actually smooth it all the way up, get rid of any kind of sharp edges there, the green check mark. And one mistake I made was not making a new layer for it, but however, it actually did default me to a new layer, so I'm pretty thankful for that. I'm going to name this one Logo, and I'm going to highlight all of this. And after I've highlighted all of it or just created a bounding box around it, I have the option to select Dynamic. So click on Dynamic, and it'll give me the center point of this uh, logo here, or all these lines. I'm going to hover over this like datum here, click on it, and then I'll click on the uh, gray ball so when it turns yellow. And I might have to zoom out a little bit and pan until I find my solid, which is seemingly in no man's land over there. And I'm just gonna drop it uh, somewhere close. If I don't wanna drop it right away, if it's still attached to my mouse, um, I can actually use this really unique function inside of Mastercam to center by still utilizing this dynamic command um, and I could go ahead and select this edge or like hover over it rather so it wakes up and then I'll hover over this corner here and then it'll actually give me the center mark of those two points and I could drop my logo there. However, if you did drop it over here for instance and you hit the green check mark and the logo is still placed, 
uh, and you can't move it anymore, I'll show you again really quick. I can go over here to transform. I can highlight all my uh, geometry here for my logo. I can click on dynamic. Once again, I'll click on the datum or the center there, and then that uh, gray ball, I'll highlight it so it turns yellow. And then I'll hover over the top left corner, and then I'll hover over the bottom right corner. And then I'll actually access the center of that. And I wouldn't have been able to do that if my radii were there. Uh, I would just make it a little bit more difficult. And then I'll hit the um, green check mark. So if I wanted to, too, I could select my layers here um, and then kind of scale this down a little bit, bit uh, a little bit smaller. This isn't looking terrible. Um, however, uh, just so I can go ahead and scale it, maybe just like 25% smaller. I'm going to hide some of this other uh, geometry here so I'm only seeing my logo. So I can toggle that with the visible here. And then I'll just go ahead and select all of this. And then I'm going to do a scale. And I'm just going to scale from reference point. So it's going to auto center, so it's going to pick up that datum. However, if you're not sure, you can always click on reselect and you can select that datum point as well. And then I'm going to scale this to about 75%. Percentage there, 75. Okay. Oops. I'll control Z. I accidentally made a copy instead of moving it. So I'll select all that again, scale, percentage, and then make sure that it's not selected copy. You're, you're going to uh, select move. Check mark, cop. Not quite sure where my logo went. <laughs> Moved on me again. Select all that. Dynamic. This is just good practice. You can see how some of this can kind of get annoying after a while, which is why I try to do most of my designing here in SolidWorks. Okay, check mark. Okay. So now my logo is placed. If I turn on my solid again, I can actually project that into the uh, solid there. So if we go over to machine, we're actually going to make a default machine now. So we'll go to mill, default, and then here in my toolpaths, you can see that I have my toolpath group. A couple things I got to set up. I got to make some stock here. Um, so let's go ahead and create. In the properties, go to stock setup, bounding box, we'll do the selection here, and then we'll just make this our stock size. So this is going to be 3.75 by 3 by 1. Okay, looking pretty good. Green check mark, green check mark. If I want to toggle on and off my stock there, you can always go to stock display inside the toolpath tab, and you can actually see your um, dotted lines for it, for the mesh. And I'm going to create another uh, wireframe here for my um, stock material. It's not necessary, it's just good habit to get into. I always just create a secondary bounding box, so I'll create another level here inside my levels tab. And I'll name this wireframe stock. Okay. So inside my wireframe stock, I'll go over to wireframe. I'll create a bounding box, same thing. We'll just select that and selection, and then we'll populate it as we did before, 3.75, three and one. Okay, matching up, green check mark. Oops, it looks like it got off a little bit. I'm gonna control Z that really quick. Wireframe stock, bonding box, select that, green check mark. Let's go from the center there, 3.75, 3, and 1. All right, that's matching our stock now, green check mark. Okay, so pretty easy to process this. We're going to go through this two times, one in Mastercam, one inside SolidWorks. Um, or using the SolidWorks refer reference file, but we're going to hop over here to the machine tab or sorry, the toolpaths tab, and go over to the toolpaths tab on the left and on the top here. And we'll just do a standard uh, face mill operation. So face, and we'll grab this entire edge. 
and we'll go to tools. Um, Got to bring in a tool library. I'm actually going to back out of this and use the one that we're using in class. So good reminder to always go to tool manager. And then we're going to populate this by selecting a different tool library. And we're going to find our DMU 50 uh, tool library. If you don't have this tool library, um, you can continue on with that step and just um, brought in your default tool library. But what we're going to do is we're going to highlight this and we're going to copy it up using the arrow, green check mark. Now I'll go into face mill. And like I was saying, we're just going to click this edge and then we can hit the fast forward button to grab all those edges there. Tool, we'll grab a three inch face mill. We'll title this three inch face mill. Cut parameters. We're going to change this from cut parameter to one way to uh, one pass. Um, we can just shorten up our approach distance here to 25%. Stock to leave on floor, nothing. Depth of cut. Just make sure that we're registering about 60 thousandths. I think we're only taking off 30 thousandths here in this first pass. So it's not really going to come into play. Linking parameters. Always, always, always. Absolute, 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 absolute. Top stock. It's already registering that we're 30 thousandths above. That's no problem. Depth. We're going to change it to zero. It seems that it's already defaulting here to zero. We've got our first pass there. No problem. All right. Now we're going to go ahead and contour out the edges. We don't want to... Um, cut all the way down. We're going to cut to pretty uh, decent distance here, but we'll just do a standard uh, contour here. So click on contour and we'll grab this, uh, change it from wireframe to solids and we'll grab this edge here. If it wants to let me. Nope. A little being a little difficult here. Let's see if I go to partial, not the face. Let's do a loop. There we go. Let's do partial. So I had to do partial on that one. It just wasn't registering for me. I just fast forward my way through by clicking on the red arrow here. I suppose I could have probably just grabbed the back side too. Uh, missed that one. And then we'll hit the green check mark tool. We'll go ahead and we'll do a, um, a roughing and a finishing. So I'll just do a roughing operation here. We're not really taking off that. Actually, let's just do a finishing operation. We're not really taking off that much um, material here. So we'll do the 5 8 end mill finish. Let's title this 0.5625 or 0.625 end mill contour okay and then we'll go ahead and jump out here to cut parameters um we're going to leave nothing on the wall and nothing on the floors we're going to leave it uh left cutter compensation and computer um depth cuts we'll do the full depth we're really not going to play around with it lead and lead out we can leave that that's fine we might want to change or shorten up these lengths um, to maybe like 50%, but we'll see how big that radius truly is when the toolpath is generated. Jump here to linking parameters, um, top of stock. We no longer have that 30 thousandths above, so if I wanted to, I could just zero this out or find it. However, the depth is going to be something that we're going to hold in question here. So I'm actually going to see that the total depth here is zero to... 0.8125 and I'm going to go about down to 0.625 so I want to leave enough stock at the bottom so that the um, jaws can still hold the part without me running into the jaws so I'm going to leave about a quarter inch uh, for the jaws to hold on to so I'll hit the green check mark and you can see that's not too bad and I'm going to leave that as such if I wanted to I could go ahead and simulate that out so See what this looks like. The play button, not too bad. Maybe some graphics errors right there. All right, so then I will back out of verify there and we are going to go ahead and add the uh, chamfer as well as add the uh, contour for the logo. So now I'm gonna go over here to Contour again, we kind of use this um, 
method last time when we were talking about it um, with the bottle opener um, and the work holding and that we had to use the contour and use the contour um, chamfer because the model chamfer won't recognize these edges unless you offset them. So I feel like I'm going to be stuck in the same situation here where I'm just going to have to select these edges one by one. Hit the green check mark. I'm sure I could have also grabbed the wireframe as well. I'm just missing all of these right now. All right, tool. We're going to go ahead and grab our chamfer cutter. And we're just going to do a 0.125 chamfer edge. Go down to cut parameters. So we have to change the contour type to a 2D chamfer. And the chamfer width itself is going to be 0.125 and the bottom offset. You can leave it at default. You can also change it to zero, whatever way that you want to look at that. It's going to be fine. Lead and lead out, we'll leave that the same. Linking parameters, um, absolute, 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 absolute. Since I grabbed that bottom edge there instead of the wireframe, which would have been set at zero, I actually have to change my top of stock here to zero, and then my depth, I'm going to actually change that to zero as well. And we'll hit the green check mark. So that's where my chamfer is going to be placed. See how that looks. Oops, I gotta grab all my toolpath geometry here. Top. Lost the part there. Top. Fit. Go ahead and verify that one more time. I think my mouse just moved my part into no man's land, okay? And then I'm gonna go to verify, color loop, and then we'll go ahead and play that. So it's how I applied that chamfer, even though that chamfer was already there. And the last thing that we're gonna talk about here is uh, contouring out this logo. So I'm gonna back out of my verify, and then I'm gonna go here to uh, contour once again. And inside this contour, if I wanted to, I could isolate this geometry, which might be a little bit easier, or I could kind of try to get a full loop of it. So I'll grab the chamfer, or sorry, I'll grab the wireframe geometry, and it's gonna grab that whole edge. You'd probably have to systematically grab each one of these edges until they're all selected. However, if you wanted to, you could also um, hide all of your different levels and then do a bounding box on that as well. Um, either way is gonna work. I think this just made it a little bit quicker green check mark, and then for our tools, we're going to use not the chamfer cutter, but we're actually going to use the spot drill. So the spot drill we can utilize since it has a tip on it, it'll give us a nice surface finish as long as we don't go too deep. Another tool that we could use is the uh, .125 or the eighth inch ball mill or the ball end mill. However, um, you'd be limited on the depth of that as, as, as well. I think that the uh, spot drill that we use is, is a little bit sharper and it's going to give us a better surface finish. So I'm just going to utilize this one here on the back side. So I'm going to title this uh, Hawk Logo. And this is very important. Again, uh, I talked about this with our last video with logos. You want to make sure that when you're in here and cut parameters, you actually change this back to 2D and then compensation type. Make sure this is the most important thing. You turn that off. Likewise, equally as the most important thing. You want to make sure your lead in, lead out is turned off as well because you don't want to accidentally gouge the part. Okay, so then linking parameters, we're going to change the top of stock to be the top face and then the depth. We're just going to go down, not too much, we're going to go down about five thousandths and then hit the green check mark. So you can see that the tool is jumping from each one of these contours. So if I generate this tool path here, and you got to think, five thousandths really isn't that deep especially using that um, spot drill there. So then I will simulate that all out. And you can see if I wanted to, I could turn off my wireframe and that's what the logo would look like. That's how deep we're going. Of course, you can always go a little bit deeper. Maybe you're gonna go to 10 thou. I'll show you what that looks like really quick. Green check mark, tool path, and then we will simulate the whole thing once again. That looks a little bit better, not too bad. And again, 
Uh, Master Cam does a really great job at um, tracing out those logos. If I was going to maybe spend a little bit more time, this might look a little bit crisper. However, I think this is good enough for the backside or the first operation of our part. So I can save that part out as is, and then I'm going to now start a new file referencing the SOLIDWORKS component as well. So I'm gonna go File, Save As. This was option one, just showing you how you could model and do everything in Mastercam and not actually utilize uh, SOLIDWORKS. However, I do wanna pull from the SOLIDWORKS files that we were working on. So I'm gonna title this um, Business Card Holder. first operation and I'm going to put master cam in parentheses there and I'll save that so I always have that as a reference okay so now that we've saved this using the master cam modeling let's go ahead and import a SOLIDWORKS file the one that we've been using and program it um, using the same techniques so let's go ahead and start a new file we're going to file and new and then we just want to make sure whenever we start a new file that our configurations are reading in inches and inches. So we're going to file, configuration, uh, the analyzed measurements, it's going to be in inches, as well as the current. So we're going to change that to inches and hit the green check mark. So we should be able to go to file, open, and then we're going to go to computer. And then wherever you saved your files at uh, for the business card holder, that's where I'm going to be pulling my file from. So grab the business card holder. Um, if you're not seeing all of your different file types here, and it's only defaulting to Mastercam files, just make sure that you, on the right hand side, or bottom right hand corner, um, change it from Mastercam files to all files, and then we'll find that business card holder, and then hit open. And as long as we saved all of our configurations the last time that we opened up that SOLIDWORKS part, so if you remember, there should be like a green check mark next to every one of your configurations um, before you save it out. Uh, we should be able to see and access all those different uh, configurations. So. It will make it easier for us when we start 5-axis programming. However, for right now, um, I don't really need to access all these swivel rotations or cyclic hundreds. Uh, I'm just going to go and grab the uh, no text or logo file. So I ran into a slight issue importing my SOLIDWORKS files with the logos, and I found a workaround. Um, hopefully, I can find another fix to actually import it with the file itself, but just bear with me on that one. So we're going to grab no text or logo and then hit the green check mark. So if you remember, whenever we pull in a, uh, a part file from SOLIDWORKS into Mastercam, the orientations are a little bit different. So whenever I right click and I go to top, I'm actually looking right at the part instead of like looking down at it. And even so, I want to be looking at the backside here um, to access the first operation. So we're going to set up a couple things. Um, if you go over here to levels, we're going to set up our wireframe really quick. So we'll hit a plus and we'll just name this wireframe. And just like what we did before with the um, Mastercam uh, modeling portion of this video, we're going to go to wireframe and we're just going to grab a bounding box and then select that part. And then just make sure that it's coming from the middle and selection. And we'll just change this to 3.75 by 1 by 3. And then we'll hit the green check mark. So at least we have the reference of our wireframe extents of the uh, raw material here or the stock material. Okay, so next thing that we got to do is we have to set up our plane so that it's reading um, the right way and then we're looking down at the part. So we're going to go over here to planes on the bottom tab and then inside planes um, we are going to remove or sorry move the uh, origin from the top here to the center of the bottom. So go ahead and hit the plus button and then we're going to access dynamic. Um, we're gonna have to try to like fish for it a little bit, but if you go somewhere here in the middle, you'll see that your uh, nomen, or your X, Y, and Z axes here are going to link itself to the origin of the SOLIDWORKS part. And then once we're there, we're just going to, instead of rotating up like we've normally done because we're rotating around the X axis, we're grabbing one of those uh, red segments. We're actually gonna to go to positive 90 so that it's facing down, so Z is facing down. And we also have to move the location from this top face down to the bottom face. So I'm just going to grab the Z itself. And you'll notice that when you click on the Z, you can actually move it. Uh, and you can get these incremental values if you use the ruler. And I'm just going to go down to 0.9375, which is going to be the top of, or in this case, the bottom of the part or the top of the part. 
And the last thing that we have to do here is I'm going to rotate around. Um, you'll notice that the Y is actually facing down and I want it to be facing up. So I'll have to rotate this around in Z. So I'm going to grab one of these uh, blue segments and then I'm going to go to negative 180. And I'm going to name this uh, new plane here. I'm going to name it first op top and then hit the green check mark. And just make sure that you set your WCS there as well as your C and your T planes. So when I right click in 3D space and I go to top now, I'm looking head down at the part just like how we were looking at it in the master cam modeling portion. Okay, so the one thing that I wanted to talk about really quick is when I tried to import the uh, logo, I was having some errors coming from SolidWorks into Mastercam. Uh, I did find one workaround. You have to make sure that you are working here on this first op top plane, and we are gonna create a new level here for the logo. So we're gonna click on the plus button, and then we're gonna entitle this new level logo. And then in that logo level, uh, I'm actually going to merge in a DXF file. So I was able to export the um, DXF or the 2D geometry of the logo from SolidWorks and uh, it, I didn't get any issues uh, bringing it into Mastercam that way. So we're gonna go to File and we're gonna go to uh, Merge. And then inside of this window, again, if you're not seeing all files, just make sure that you're pulling from all files. And then I'm gonna grab the IIT logo. I'm gonna click on Open. Uh, right now it is importing it in such a way that it's dropping it on the top plane of um, the previous work offset. So I just have to uh, just change this slightly and down here on the left hand side inside of this properties bar just set to the current C plane. And it's actually going to rotate it like that. And then we can actually um, align it accordingly using the dynamic command. So inside this merge pattern we can click on dynamic. And then once again, I'm going to grab on like one of these nomens here, or like the datums rather. And then I can use the Z once again, and I can use the ruler and move it incrementally to 0.9375. And that's just going to drop it on that face there, and I'll hit the green check mark. So a little bit of a workaround to um, getting our logo from SolidWorks into Mastercam wasn't terrible. Uh, I'm normally used to seeing that logo coming in. Uh, with the part file itself, but I was able to find a workaround so we can continue on with this video. All right, so now I'm going to set up my uh, stock material. So I'll go over here to toolpaths, and then I'm going to make sure that I go to machine, and then I prompt a new machine to uh, populate my toolpath page here. So mill, default, inside default here, go to properties, and then we're going to grab stock setup. So stock setup. And I'm just going to grab the bounding box here. And then I'm going to grab the manual, click on that part, so all of it, and then hit end selection. And then now, once again, update this accordingly to 3.75, 1, and then 3. And then hit the green check mark. Green check mark once again. And then if I don't see my dotted lines there, I can hit the stock display. So I can see my stock display there and I can go ahead and get started programming. So I won't make the same mistake as last time. I remember that I have to import my tool uh, library. So click on tool manager. Um, and then right now I don't have anything in here. It's an empty uh, tool magazine. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab a different tool library and I'm gonna go ahead and find my DMU50 IIT. So if I select all these tools, I can then bring them up into my actual magazine and then hit the green check mark. Okay, so now that my tool library is populated, I can go ahead and get started on programming this. So uh, just like what we did uh, with the uh, Mastercam model, we are going to face mill it, contour it, and add the chamfer. And then lastly, we're going to uh, do our logo here. So we'll start off with the face mill, and then we will go ahead and grab the chain here, and we'll just fast forward through that chain, uh, that top face, and then we'll grab our tool, Grab the three inch face mill and we'll give a note here for three inch face mill. Okay. And then we'll go to cut parameters, change it from cutting method from one way to one pass. We will change the approach distance to 25% just to kind of get rid of some of that wasted air. And then the stock to leave on floor, we're going to change it to zero. Depth of cut, it's always good habit to go ahead and put this down into oops, 0.0625 and then linking parameters. Just uh, 
get this all at absolute, 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 and absolute. Top of stock. It's reading um, the right values, but you can always double check it here. Depth, and then we'll grab the corner there. So top of stock should be 30 thousandths. Depth should be zero. And then we'll hit the green check mark. So it looks like my uh, tool geometry, toolpath geometry is projecting the way I want it to. I'm going to continue on with my uh, contour. So I'll go over here to contour and I'm going to grab my, instead of a wireframe, I'm going to grab the solid and I'm just going to try to, once again, get the loop here. I wasn't having much luck with the solid model from uh, the Mastercam model. So I'm going to probably have to change this to edges, remove faces, and then just step myself through this by using the red arrow until I make a complete loop here. This time I do not get to take advantage of the wireframe geometry, which I didn't take advantage of uh, earlier in the video as well. So I'll get a full loop, hit the green check mark um, tool. We'll change this to a 5 8 end mill, and we'll title the size end mill contour. Come down here to cut parameters, make sure that it's reading 2D. Cutter compensation is computer and left. Stock to leave on walls and floor, zero and zero. Depth cut, we're gonna use the full length of cut, so not don't need to worry about that. Lead and lead out, make sure that that's activated. Linking parameters, uh, we no longer have that 30 thousandths at the top of the stock, so we can actually change that to zero, or we can just type in a zero value. Depth, once again, um, we're gonna go all the way down, but I'm gonna go a little bit shy of it. So I think we said that we were gonna go down a value of, and this is not absolute, absolute, absolute. We're gonna go down to a value of negative 0.625 so that we do not run into our hard jaws. And then we'll hit the green check mark and that's what it's gonna look like. All right, so now I have to add the chamfer. And then lastly, I'm gonna go ahead and um, do my detail here with the uh, logo. So I'm gonna go and do just like what I did before, contour. I'm gonna to have to kind of step through these edges one by one. Now I can probably get the loops here, but just doing it like this. Green check mark. All right, tool. And then we'll grab our chamfer tool. Go to 0.125 chamfer, just like what we did before. Cut parameters, this is important. You have to change the contour type to 2D chamfer. Computer, we're gonna change that to, oh, we'll leave it as computer, my apologies. And then the chamfer width, that's going to be 0.125. You can change the bottom offset to zero if you want. Depth cut, don't need to worry about. Lead and lead out, we can leave that the same. Linking parameters, uh, we're just gonna make sure it's all absolute. And then the depth, just change it to zero and top stock zero. Okay, green check mark. I got my chamfer in there, no problem. And the last thing that I gotta do is actually get the geometry here of this uh, logo. So really quickly, I'm gonna hop over here to the levels and I'm going to turn off some of the other uh, existing geometry. So my uh, solid model there, the first um, level I'm going to turn off. I'm also going to turn off my wireframe just so I don't pick that up. I'm only going to grab the logo, um, which seems to go into a different layer here. And I'm now going to go over here to toolpaths. One thing I'm noticing is that it's also pulling in some of my construction lines. I don't want to accidentally uh, include that with the contour. So what we can do is we can kind of delete some of these construction lines out by clicking on them and deleting them. I just want that geometry there. So now when I go into my tool paths, I'm gonna to go to contour and then I can use the bounding box or the window here and I can now select all of this. Instead of having to click one by one, it's asking me for an approximate start point. I'm gonna click there. So it's grabbing all that geometry, hit the green check mark tool. We are now going to drop down here to the 12 millimeter spot drill, and we're just gonna name this the IIT logo. Cut parameters. Um, we're gonna change this back from contour type to 2D, and the computer, very important that we turn this off, and then equally as important, turn off our lead in and lead out, because we don't wanna accidentally gouge the part as we're um, cutting this logo. And then linking parameters, make sure that this is reading all absolute. Top of stock, I can probably just zero this out 
and then the depth, I can actually give a value just like what we did before with the Hawk logo to a negative 10 thousandths. Green check mark, looks like that logo is projecting just the way I want it to. If I want to see my part underneath it, I can always turn it back on with my levels. And then inside a toolpath, let's go ahead and simulate all of this. And we'll go to verify. And then we will zoom that out. I'm going to slow it down just slightly. And then we're going to see a face mill, contour, chamfer, and then my logo. So not too bad. And I much prefer this over having to create everything out in Mastercam, you know, especially when we already have the model and we have to do all the FEA and everything inside of SOLIDWORKS. Um, one thing to consider as well is when we go to second operation, all of my details are still there in the second operation from SOLIDWORKS as well. So I just wanted to show you two ways and how to approach that. I'm going to go ahead and save that out and we'll end the video there. So I'll go to file, save as, this card holder, and I'll name this the um, business card holder first operation and then instead of master cam in the parentheses I will put SolidWorks so thanks for watching and I'll see you the next one bye